Our third lesson on Lesson 3.2 is finding rate of change from a table and from an equation. So there's kind of two parts of this lesson. Uh, the second part where we're finding rate of change from an equation is really quite simple. Uh, all it is is identifying a term in an equation. We'll get to that a little bit later on. The main part of this lesson is going to be finding rate of change from a table. And so we do have the two goals, um, or I guess the related goals. The first thing that we want to be able to do is we want to use the slope formula for a table to find its rate of change. And then again, the second part is to identify slope when given an equation. All right. So thinking back to our first two lessons on 3.2, our first thing that our first uh, part of the lesson, we were finding rate of change from a graph. And so when we have when we're finding rate of change from a graph, we're going to use m is equal to rise or run. So again, with the graph, we use m, which represents slope. So slope is equal to rise over run. Second, equation, or second lesson from 3.2b, we are finding rate of change from two ordered pairs. And when we have two ordered pairs, we're going to use m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now with today's lesson, we get to our third type of way of representing an equation or representing a line. And that's going to be with a table. So with the table, we're going to have a third formula that we're, that we're going to use. And that formula that we're going to be using is m is equal to delta y over delta x. So you notice that I have triangles there, a triangle next to the y and a triangle next to the x. Those are actually Greek letters in this equation. So a triangle in the Greek alphabet is the Greek letter delta. So our formula again for a table is m is going to be equal to delta y over delta x. And so we'll look at a few examples and see how we can use that formula to identify the slope in a table. So in our first table we have x values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And for our y values we have negative 4, negative 1, 0, 2, and 5. Now it's important for me to point out, and this is something that I want you guys to write down, okay? I want you to write this down. That when you have a table like this that has five rows, not including the x and the y. So we have these five rows. Row here, 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 and here. So we've got these five rows. Those five rows actually represent five order pairs. So our first order pair would be negative 2 comma negative 4. Our second order pair would be negative 1 comma negative 1. Third order pair would be 0 comma 2. Fourth order pair would be 1 comma 5. And finally we would have 2 comma 8. So you could, if you wanted to, go to a graph, go to a coordinate grid, plot these five points on the graph, and then if you wanted to, you could use rise over run to find the rate of change from this table. Okay, You could plot those five points, draw a straight line going through those five points, and you have a line, and then you can use rise over run, again, if you wanted to. Or, if you wanted to, we could use the formula that we learned yesterday, y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1. And you could choose any two of those five order pairs and use that formula. Okay? So this is just another way of representing the graph of a line. In my opinion, this method of finding rate of change is the easiest. I think it's the easiest of the four that we're going to be learning. Okay? So essentially what we need to do is we need to find the change from one x value and from one from one y value to the next. Okay, and here's what I mean by change. Essentially what you're doing is you're asking yourself, all right, if I look at negative two to negative one, to go from negative two to negative one, what am I doing to negative two to go to negative one? Am I adding one? Am I subtracting one? Am I adding three? Am I subtracting four? Whatever it might be. What are we adding or subtracting to the first number that we have to get to the second number that we have? Okay? Well, in this case, to, in order to go from negative 2 to negative 1 using addition or subtraction, we're just going to add 1. And so I'm going to put a plus 1 over here. Now, we keep doing that same thing throughout the entire column. Now, next, we're going to go from negative 1 to 0. To get from negative 1 to 0, again, we're going to add 1. From 0 to 1, we add 1. And from 1 to 2, we add 1. All of these values should be the same. 
if there's not the same, that still could be okay. Okay, but we're not going to worry about that right now. The, what, all, I'm, all I want you to notice is that these values are all the same. Okay, and now we want to look at the y values. So for the y values, we start at negative 4 and we go up to negative 1. So how are we getting from negative 4 to negative 1? Do we have to add a number? Do we have to subtract a number? If it's multiplication or division, that's not the route that you want to take. Okay? So we want to use only addition or subtraction in order to go from one y value to the next. So in order to go from negative 4 up to negative 1, we want to add 3. Same thing from negative 1 up to positive 2. Negative 1 plus 3 will give us positive 2. To go from 2 to 5, again we're adding 3, and from 5 to 8, we'll add 3. Well, these values that we found on the side here, this plus 1 on the x, x side and this plus 3 on the y side, those are our delta values. So over here in purple, that's our value for delta x, and over here on the y side, that's our value for delta y. All right? So our final formula here is just m is equal to 3 over 1. And that's it. That's all we're doing to find the slope from a table. All right? So let's take a look at another one. So for our second example, I set this table so that it is laid out uh, horizontally, where if our first example, our table was vertical. Either way, we do the same thing. For our x values, we look at 1, 2, 3, 4. Our y values, we have negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, and negative 7. So in the first example, we have five order pairs listed. For the second example, we only have four order pairs listed. That's fine. We still do the same thing. So we want to identify the values for our delta x first. Even though delta x goes in the numerator, we should still do those first. And to go from 1 to 2, we again see that we're adding 1. 2 to 3, we'll add 1. 3 to 4, we'll add 1. Okay, so there's our delta x values. For our delta y values, we have to ask ourselves, in order to get from negative 1 down to negative 3, well, if you picture negative 1 and negative 3 on a number line, we should know that to get from negative 1 to negative 3 on the number line, we have to move left two units. When we move left on a number line, that means we're subtracting. So we have negative 2 here to go from negative 3 to negative 5. Again, we're subtracting 2. And from negative 5 to negative 7, still subtracting 2. In red, we have our values for delta x. In gray, we have our values for delta y. And so our value for slope should be m is equal to, make sure that our delta y value goes in the numerator, and our delta x value goes in the denominator. So we end up with negative 2 over 1 as our rate of change for this table. So far, both examples we looked at, our values for delta x have both been plus 1. Typically, they will be positive. If you get a table where your delta x values are negative, that's just because somebody's being mean to you. And I try not to be mean to you. So I will not give you delta x values that are negative. My HRW, I can't say for certain if they'll give you delta x values that are negative or not. Um, I will always make sure that my values for delta x will be positive. Okay, they might not always be positive 1, but I will always make sure that my delta x values that I give you guys will be positive. Okay? Now, delta y, on the other hand, that could be e very easily be positive or negative. Okay? So, delta y is the one that you have to ask yourself, be more careful with, to make sure uh, if, you, if it's supposed to have a positive value or a negative value for your, your delta y. So, let's go ahead and take a look at two more examples of tables where we're trying to find the slope using delta y over delta x. All right, for a third example, we have x values of 2, 4, 6, and 8. Our y values are 6, 1, negative 4, and negative 9. So we need to figure out the values for delta x and delta y. And then once we do that, then we, have, then we pretty much just have our slope. So for our x values, we can see pretty easily there we're going up by 2 each time. 
Okay, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8. Okay, and now we need to identify our values for delta y. To get from 6 to 1, we're going to subtract 5. From 1 to negative 4, again we subtract 5. And from negative 4 to negative 9, one last time, we subtract 5. Therefore, our slope for this table, m is going to be equal to negative 5 over 2. And again, we would want to leave that fraction as an improper fraction. We would not want to convert that to a mixed number or to a decimal. We would just leave it simply as negative 5 over 2. If you wanted to rewrite it with a negative sign out front, that would be just fine but having it in the numerator, that's fine as well. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. All right, with this last table, I'm throwing you guys a little bit of a curveball with this one. Our x values are 1, 4, 10, and 13, and our y values are 6, 5, 3, and 2. So what we want to do, again, figure out what we have to do to get from one number to the next number. All right, so to get from 1 to 4, we're going to add 3, but then to get from 4 to 10, we're going to add 6. Now that's different than what we've looked at so far. Up to this point, our values for delta x and delta y have been the same all the way along the table, but here we see that we have a different value for delta x. That still could be okay. To get from 10 to 13, we go up by 3 again. All right. Now in the... In the bottom, with delta y, to go from 6 to 5, we subtract 1. To go from 5 to 3, again, a little bit of a change up. We have, we're going to go down by 2. And then to go from 3 to 2, we're going to subtract 1. Now, because we don't have the same value for delta x throughout the whole, throughout the whole top here, and we don't have the same value for delta y down here, we have to do each pair of delta values separately. So we have to do 3 and negative 1, we have to do 6 and negative 2, we have to do 3 and negative 1 again. Well, we don't have to do it again since we already did that here, okay? And if our ratios are equal, then we're still good. That's our value for our slope. However, if we end up with different ratios, and this is what I need you guys to write down, if we end up with different ratios, then we do not have a constant rate of change for the table. We cannot say what our slope is because it's not constant. So let's look at our first pair of numbers first. So we have m is equal to negative 1 over positive 3. Okay, m is equal to negative 1 over 3. Now, if our second pair of delta values simplifies to give us the same thing, then we're okay. That's our rate of change. But if we simplify it and it doesn't equal our initial rate of change that we have here, then the table does not represent a linear relationship. It's not a straight line. So let's go ahead and take a look. We have m is equal to, we're going to have negative 2 in our numerator over positive 6 in our denominator. Well, if we look at that fraction, if we look at that ratio, we should see that that simplifies to negative 1 third. So therefore, m is equal to negative 1 third. That is our rate of change. That's our slope for that table. Okay? Now, that's the first part of the lesson. It took us a little bit longer than I expected it, uh, than I expected it to. The second part of the, of the of the lesson should go much, much more quickly. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples. All right, so for our second part, whenever we're, whenever we're given the equation of a line, typically it will be in the form y equals mx plus b. Now this b value that I have right here, that's going to be something that we're going to use more and more in module 4. Okay, we're not, using, we're not worried too much about that right now, except to show you what the general form for an equation looks like. What you guys need to recognize is part of this equation, we had the letter m again. Okay, so that value 
that's being multiplied by x. That is our value for slope for that equation. So let's look at a couple examples and let's identify the slope or the rate of change from those examples. All right. First equation, we have y is equal to 3x minus 1. So we're looking for the, for the term for the number that's being multiplied by x. In this equation, the 3 is the number that's being multiplied by x. So it's very simple. Our, simple. our value for slope is going to be 3. Or, if we wanted to, we could write it as m is equal to 3 over 1. Okay? And that's all there is to it, to identifying slope from an equation. We'll look at one more example. All right, second equation that I just made up off the top of my head. We have y is equal to 2 sevenths x plus 11. Again, it's whatever number is in front of the x term. That's our value for slope. So our value for slope for this equation is m is equal to 2 over 7. Okay, now the only thing I didn't include an example where we have a negative value for slope, but if there happened to be a negative sign in front of the of from that term there, then we would need to make sure that our slope is negative as well. Okay? So that's our lesson for 3.2c, finding rate of change from a table and from an equation. Write down any questions that you have. We'll watch this video um, at some point. I'm not sure if we're going to do it for homework tonight or for class tomorrow. All right, but write down any questions that you might have, and we'll go over those together in class.